Hey everybody, it's June twenty eighth, and we are out here. This is Squad Ops. If you don't know what Squad Ops is, we are a community that runs One Life events, all kinds of fun. Everybody that's in this server has agreed that they are going to come in, follow a certain set of rules, and whenever they die once, they are dead for good in that round. After that, they will get to switch into admin cam and watch what's going on. So. We're out here running Operation Fishhook. This is a pretty basic operation that involves a couple of recruits that are away from their team, and they need to be picked up by the Russians. Militia is going to be trying to intercept those scouts and then trying to block them from getting them to their exfil location. Just so you guys know, my name is CMYK Matter. I'm going to be one of your commentators tonight, and also joining me tonight for his commentating debut, Google Trex. What's up, man? How's it going, Matter? Doing well, doing well. Pretty excited to be here. I'm pretty excited to see how this goes. The assets tonight are really interesting. I'm happy to see that we're actually having kind of mirrored assets on either team. Two MTLB NVSTs for each team. The Militia gets two, the Russians get two. Gonna be a good time. So what's the plan for the Russians, Google? Do you know what they were planning over there? Uh, it sounded like they were going to have a certain group of people hold. I don't remember which squad at this point, but they were going to have them hold their exfil location while one squad pushed out to retrieve the uh, recruits. And because the recruits don't have bandages, they are very vulnerable and they're basically the... They have to be protected. Uh... Absolutely. So that's going to be an interesting one for them to do. It looks like the militia, they are tasked with finding those scouts and eliminating them before the Russians are able to pick them up. And if they're not able to do that, then they have to kill them at an exfil location that is predetermined. But it looks like the militia have chosen to push out mostly in their MTLBs. They are setting up two people in the MTLB here. Carpy and Hyper Evo are going to be getting eyes out while the rest of the squad pushes in on foot. As you can see on my map here, down to the southwest, another squad is pushing up. And they are not too far from the scout team. Squad 4 up there on the north side has pushed out, and they're going to be watching that northern flank kind of acting as a, a rear force. Now, they have to be hearing this MTLB rolling in. Looks like for you guys... A lot of there's just a big push running right to the scout team. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, it looks like Jack Reynolds squad, squad three here, is pushing out on foot from one of the MTLB and toward the recruits. It also looks like um, Creeping is also pushing his squad out toward uh, toward the recruits on foot. We'll wow. see how that turns out. The so MTLB the is supporting the push. Yeah, the Militia MTLB is very close to the scouts now, actually. They've dropped off a squad. They're leaving Silverpud and Dermaplast in the MTLB. And then they are pushing out some guys that are going to be moving right towards those scouts. If you can see in the back of my frame here, there's some red triangles over there. And those are the scouts that they actually need to find before the Russians get to them. And Xbit, Fulcrum... The one to the south has a base. A couple of the other guys here, Iron Tyrant, pushing out into this village, getting real close. Expit, you can see his camera here. He's scoping around. He's got his Vinox out, trying to keep a good eye. If he sees those scouts, it's going to be an all on push. They're going to go for him. We'll see what they do. I'm excited to see what will happen here. I'm, I'm actually pretty interested to see them getting this close this early. That's a big set of grid squares that they have to push through in order to find these recruits. And if they're able to actually find them before it even starts, that's going to be a big boon for them. Absolutely. They get a jump on heading toward the uh, exfil location before, before the team that was supposed to rescue them can get back to their vehicles and get to the exfil. Absolutely. Big yes in the silver man pushing in here. Okay. They're going to move up on that. It looks like the scouts have tried to kind of hunker themselves down and not give away too much. I think they're actually sitting in a basement in that building. Am I correct in that? could be falling in this field here. 
I just heard Best Pony say that it's going to be really difficult to find the recruits unless they open fire. You are correct. They are in the basement of this house, hunkered down and holding quiet. Dr. Com Dr. Kamikaze and his squad holding in the basement. Man, bird person, silver man, they are moving to this building. Dr. Kamikaze is going to hear footsteps upstairs. That's got to be terrifying. Let's see if they actually clear this house. There is a door on the front here. Oh, man, they're holding in Dr. that basement. Dr. Kamikaze just called over, over command comms. He hears... They're pushing into the building. Silverman's coming in. Bird person's coming in. Going right. There's a downstairs. There's a base. There's a downstairs. Bird person just called it. He's gonna push down. Silverman making one of those pushes. He's one of the ones on that team. Bird person's gonna see him, and there it is. They know where the first, recruits are. First kill of the op is Bird person goes to Doctor Kamikaze. Grenade goes in. Scout team n is now exposed. Wow. Like what luck for them to actually find that scout team. Big yes, Silverman. They have to be calling that out. Best Pony, probably ecstatic that they found them. Roger that. That is fantastic. If, if you can hear it, you might be able to hear it. The, uh, the recruit team is freaking out. And they only have two mags, so they can't hold off a push forever. Absolutely. They can only okay, hold off very we, little bit. Set it, set it right oh, right oh my God. Fulcrum is setting an IED. Right here? Fulcrum is setting this, an IED right above them. This might turn into the fastest recruit kill ever. He's dropped that IED right on their heads. There I've... Wait, at least I don't see it on the map. He's pulling out his phone. Oh no. I think he's going to hit the button. I think the IED might have been a dud. I hope I hope for the recruit team that was a dud IED. Yep, looks like he did not, he was not able to blow it. Maybe his placement was wrong or something. It seems like the scout team knows they have IEDs. They're calling out IEDs. They are in a major panic. Silverman right goes down. Dr. Kamikaze drops him like third period French. Oh, man. Gotta love it. Fulcrum still holding that position there. Can only imagine they... how their hearts are beating. Another grenade going in. I don't think that'll get a kill. That was actually a bad nade. Came back on Fulcrum. He he's able to get into the next room. Oh, creeping! Creeping is pushing in on Fulcrum right now. He takes some shots from Iron Tyrant. Iron Tyrant goes down to Tedish. Creeping, pushing in, takes out Fulcrum, and now this squad that managed to find these recruits so early in the mission the full are platoon now almost is now, completely wiped out. Absolutely. Yeah, the full platoon has now moved in on the recruit squad for the rescue and pushing back the attackers. Absolutely. Let's switch up here to, uh, on this hill. Let's see what's happening up here. Maureen's kids moving directly towards the enemy here. Does he know that there's the enemy directly in front of him? He does. He sees boogies. He's laying boogie five, maybe. Looks like boogies to me. I think that's boogies. We'll say it's boogies. Looks like Teddy's squad managed to get the recruits out of the basement safely and are pushing them back. Beautiful. Chappie laying down fire from up here. They're under some fire down there, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Bullets are pinging all around their building. The recruits are back in cover inside a building while they bring in a transport. Try and get them safely out in an armored personnel carrier vehicle. Absolutely. Smart stuff. Looks like this platoon has made a very good push here. And they are getting those recruits. MTLB has maneuvered itself. This is the militia MTLB, driven by Soberpud and Dermaplast, has maneuvered itself on the south side of the village 
and it is laying down some support fire. It put in some shots Quality towards Muff. Muff's bleeding. He's crawling away, though. All right, there's a full squad yeah, absolutely. That's that uh, recruit team managed to pull out of the building just as those bullets, those bullets, those 50 cal that will penetrate that wall. Coming in. And it looks like they managed to get to the APC, which is going to pull out here really quickly under base of fire from the other armored personnel carrier. Really smart, really smart stuff to bring in that APC and try to quickly pick those guys up and get them safe. I can't believe that dud IED though, man. That was crazy. Yeah, Firebat, second dud IED. It is... That is just sad. That's sad to see. They found him. I, I feel like that's one of those ones where you just... You hate to see it because that moment could have been so epic. That ep that IED just blowing up, killing all the recruits, that could have been a very crazy moment. But what are you going to do? Absolutely. Potentially the greatest play of, of fish hook, and it went as a dud. Sad. That yeah, it looks like MTLB, though, took some shots on the way out. Absolutely. It took a number of shots. They actually thought the MTLB, MTLB was going to go down. Yeah, but they managed see. to pull out. It's on Orange Health. It's not doing too well up there. But it is pulling out. So everybody's going to be rushing back towards... Back towards that exfil location. Hmm. Well, we've got a little lull in the action. Maybe we should go over our commanders and squad leads since we didn't get a chance at the beginning of the round. Kick things off. Anybody, Anytime you're seeing it from my side over here, you're going to be watching Best Pony in command for the night. He's an experienced commander. He's been doing his thing for quite a while. And under him, his capable squad leads, Xbit, Nasty Nate, Kirkley, and Satan. All those guys, very experienced. They know what they're doing. There is no doubt that they are all great squad leads. And I think that Best Pony could have confidence in them to do the right things. Yeah, absolutely. And over here on the uh, Russian side, We've got Karma Cut himself as command with his squad leads, Shadowed Ritual, Jack Reynolds, Dr. Kamikaze, and Tedish. All of them also have been squad leading or commanding, respectively, for a long time. Very capable and uh, managing to do a very great extract tonight. Absolutely. Good stuff. It's great to see. These guys all know what they're doing. So it looks like the militia have decided to, they know that the recruits have been extracted. So they're pulling everybody back out of the town, everyone that's left. They're going to mount them up in this MTLB. And there is also an MTLB that we can see on the map up to the north on that squad four mark. Those guys are going to be pushing up there. And it looks like they're going to regroup everyone, push towards the exfil location, which is at just south of shipping yard. Just south of the shipping yard is that exfil location. They'll push back up there and see if they can take the fight to them there. This initial engagement, though, broken off for now. They have successfully peeled away. They have got their recruits, and it is now going to be up to the militia to push back on the Russians now. The Russians are probably going to try to get themselves entrenched quickly. We'll see how they do it, though. We'll see about that. It looks like the recruit team has stopped at this small compound over here next to their transport and are holding position, waiting on command and the rest of the platoon to pull back. Oh, that's they have a good They have a good base of fire here with two MTLBs holding all the directions of the road. And they're taking cover behind uh, solid buildings here. But it looks like they're holding still. Absolutely. Probably not a bad plan for them to get all their eggs in a couple baskets before they try to move them all off to shipping yard and those baskets happen to be armored personnel characters to carriers today thank you everybody yeah it makes a lot of sense to get everybody back together because they don't know if the militia sent a ambush uh, ambush squad to their exfil location so they need to have some kind of attacking force besides the recruits themselves absolutely Looks like they have sent that squad up there. We'll see if they're able to make it to Shipping Yard before the Russians. If they are able to make it there before the Russians, then the Russians are going to have a hard time securing that location. Yeah, at that point, they would be taking 
fire from both directions as they try to assault a position while also fending off the militia force pushing at them from behind. Very tough situation for the Russian team if they can't get in there quickly. Absolutely. We'll see how it plays out. Ultimately, all we can do is speculate from up here in the air, try to go off of what we're hearing from the different command chats. I'm following one of the MTLBs down here, driven by Dermoplast and Silverpud, driven and gunned by Dermoplast and Silverpud, I should say. And they are taking a big old loop around. If we look on the map here, we can see that they're pushing well off to the west, and it looks like they are going to be coming into Shipping Yard, or the south, south of Shipping Yard from maybe the west? Maybe they're going to try to do a big old loop? We'll see. They're a... They are a long ways out here, is what I can say. This is going to be a long ride for them. It looks like the scout team under Tedish in the transport has pushed out by themselves without the armor or the rest of the platoon, possibly trying to go into the extra location faster than the enemy team can get there. Have they taken a vehicle with them at all? They only have the transport they're riding in. Oh, wow. So no MTLB for them, no armored support. They've decided, you know what, recruit team, though you don't have any bandages and though you only have two round or two magazines, we're going to send you out there and good luck. Maybe they're act <laughs> maybe they actually, saw a scout team and they have decided that that's going to be what they're actually going to do. You're you're the scout team, you go up there. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, we will see here. It looks like they've dismounted the vehicle just to the west of Shipping Yard. They may be trying to hold off until the rest of the platoon gets there. They are spreading out in the forest to make themselves less vulnerable a target to grenades and rockets and other explosives. That could be. Absolutely. Maybe try to get them held out in these woods where nobody expects them to be. And then all those GLs and nasty things that can come raining in from the militia. Actually, no GLs for the militia tonight. I apologize. I was wrong on that. They only have one lat, one scout. So that's all the boom that they're packing tonight. Oh, and it looks like I've made a mistake myself. The scout team is not with the Tedish. It looks like he has just his squad in that transport, and they are doing a forward observing. Uh, oh, here they're acting the as west. a Western screen. They probably anticipate. They probably anticipate the fact that there hasn't been any real contact hot on their heels. And since there hasn't been any real contact in quite a while coming up that road after them, then they probably anticipate that there's a flank coming or at least something a little more finessed than the direct assault. And if Tedish is able to sniff that out early and he's able to shut that down before they're able to push in, it's going to be a big boon for the Russians. Absolutely. It looks like they are holding just outside in the forest west of Shipping Yard. Tedish has his uh, his binocs out looking for any threats there on that western wall. Absolutely. You guys can take a look through his screen now. He's peeking out through those binocs, checking what's going on around him. It's good on him. You know, for squad leads, it's one of those interesting things. Whenever I'm in one of these ops and I'm squad leading. I'm, I'm used to kind of leading from the front or telling people where I need them to go. But as a squad lead in squad ops, you got to play it a little differently. You spend a lot of time with your binocs out. Since there are no optics allowed in these, you end up checking a lot of things for yourself. You end up looking at all the different angles, calling out things for your guys. It's really good stuff. Absolutely. A squad lead is a support class first and foremost so that Absolutely. observation is definitely helpful for the rest of your squad matrix says i was having fun until i took an nsv round to the face that's a little worse than a close shave it's not a good time yeah at least it wasn't an arrow to the knee <laughs> you know that that mtlb is pushing up here on the west they're going to be running into tetish if they keep pushing up here, they are going to run into Tedish's squad. I guarantee you Tedish is going to be able to hear them soon. This MTLB, it is... Not only is it a little slow, but it is also very loud. That thing creates quite a racket while it's rattling down the road with those tracks. I feel
feel like yeah, it's I, one of the loudest vehicles in the game. I, I could be wrong with that, but I would I, like I would definitely agree ones. with you. Maybe maybe the motorcycle has it equal, but it's definitely <laughs> the motorcycle not... that you can hear from U.S. Maine. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I definitely have a little bit of fear when I hear those tracks rolling down the road too, because it's not a light vehicle. It isn't used for assault as much, but that is a good amount of firepower considering it's a light armored transport. Yeah, it can be a little rough. It looks like Big Yes is going to be pushing out with the rest of his squad here. x in the lead. They have dismounted from the MTLB, and x is leading the charge up to this northeast here. He's got his Binox out. Scoping out the, the town, trying to get no, some no good advanced eyes on. You know, they might have stopped just far enough out so that Tedish's squad does not get ears on them. If so, that's some really smart planning from Xbit. Xbit, big yes, Slinger, chilling up on this hill. They're taking a look in. Xbit is calling out different positions. He's hoping to make sure that they have a good covered advance. If they decide to push in, we'll see what they do. On the other side of the fight, I feel like I've been following these guys for a while, so I'm going to change myself up here a little bit. Over on the other side of the fight, we've got the remnants of the rest of the squads that pushed out north. Hat is not on this map. No, uh, this op does not allow a HAT. The kits, we'll go over those real quick, actually. Militia is allowed two ARs, one LAT, one scout, and one medic per squad. And the Russians are allowed two ARs, one GL, one LAT, and one medic for each squad. So no hats on this one. So coming over here to the other side, Kirkley and his squad taking a position here on this northern side best pony telling his people to hold on to those ieds until they get on the exfil building itself they want to use it to try to clear floors yeah it looks like russia's platoon is maneuvering slow and steady from the south pushing through these forested hills here as they try and make their way to storage and it sounds like they aren't too concerned out, about getting there fast. Like they want to go slow and steady and make sure they clear any contact Engaged any contact south of them so they know for sure that they aren't going to be flanked from that direction. Absolutely. And they actually have no danger of that right now, but they do not know that. Yeah, absolutely. Every tree, every bush could uh, could be an enemy, could be an explosive, could be anything. Absolutely. Best Pony here, taking a look into the village, trying to act as that advanced scouting. A little bit by himself, but he's got some support off in the wings. So you can see Truth Realm and Magus and Crazy Russian up there. And he's got some more guys over here with Kirkley squad. All just kind of holding this position, keeping an eye out. Sir Rexicus, yes, in cap does equal death in squad ops. Sounds like Tedish. People... Oh, Tedish has good. spotted contacts east of Shipping Yard. He's calling them oh, out. Oh, all right. Somebody exposed Good themselves, man. and Tedish managed to take advantage of it. All right. Well, that's always a bad thing. You don't want to expose yourself to the enemy. <laughs> For sure. That's a little, little bit of a rough time. Might be a little cold out there today. Not sure. <laughs> that's an easy way to lose your one life in these ops. <laughs> Looks like they're putting up a line of fire here in shipping yards, hope, hoping yes, to stop any advance from this direction. They are far off the exfil point, but they are acting as an eastern barrier for the for the recruits to exfil from. Rexicus, yes, I said your name properly because I actually try to read. Sometimes that's that's all we can do. <laughs> So up here, Google Tracks, or not Google Tracks, your Google Tracks, Kirkley. Google Tracks. <laughs> Pretty sure Kirkley I'm not. Kirkley and his ground. boys. Yes, I'm sure. Kirkley and his boys pushing around here. And you said about that eastern line with Tedish. 
he hasn't spotted this group that I know of that Kirkley has up here on the north side of these shipping yard areas. Has he mentioned anything about that that you've heard? No, it sounds like he only called the eastern troops, possibly those ones far over there on the rocks. He may not have noticed the troop movements from the north here. And it looks like it looks like the guys in the building here are facing in. That's a mistake. They are not looking in the direction where enemies could be coming from. Instead, they're looking where they know is clear. That is something to keep in mind as you move about is to keep eyes where you may have contact and keep in mind everywhere you're looking. Well, it's real easy to get tunnel vision in these because you know you only have this one life and you're thinking, oh, I need to I need to really be on my toes. And oddly enough, thinking that you need to be on your toes nonstop can lead to a little bit of fatigue and you can let those things kind of drop for a moment. And Absolutely. you let your attention drop, that's going to be it for you. Inside. Uh, look, oh, sounds here's like some, some shots coming on. Yeah. Yep, they are shooting at that eastern group there in, in Shipping Yard. Just a couple of pot shots, but that put them on their toes. Everyone moved to cover. Absolutely. Good to see, though, that they analyze the situation and are trying to get themselves set up now. Interestingly enough, Blue Falcon and Kirkley squad, Blue Falcon leading the, the charge here, have now pushed themselves almost completely west, and they are crawling through this little ditch that's full of trash and other garbage out here to the west of shipping yard I'm not really sure what they're heading for but what their objective is but it seems like they're gonna push through this ditch and keep some good uh defilade from shipping yard proper This other group here pushing in. Nasty Nate looks like his squad pushing in from the south. Seems like they're trying to keep themselves moving in from the south and see if they can get some good, good actual and it's, contact on these guys. Yeah, it sounds like Shadowed and his four, him, him plus three guys, the four of them just cleared the target exfil building, checking for IEDs. Smart move there because they could bury an IED in the building and make it difficult to find. But it sounds like they cleared every room and they are pushing the recruits into the building for exfil. Absolutely. So at this point now, the militia will just have to push the entire Russian platoon and attempt to kill those uh, those uh, recruits. Absolutely. Dermoplast here, soloing this MTLB as he's pushing in. He might be looking for a gunner. Looks like he's maneuvering up onto this hill. We'll follow him for a little bit. kind of positioning himself here. So he's hopped on the gun, and as you can see, this thing is armed with an NVST, quite a big gun, something that can put down a lot of fire, though this thing is quite slow. It's got a decent amount of defense, decent amount of offense to it, but it's quite slow. The greatest property of the MTLB, in my opinion, is the fact that it can carry just so many people with it. I love to see this thing in use. It doesn't get the proper kind of respect that I feel like the MTLB deserves. It's a difficult thing to operate because it runs on ice skates, but I love this MTLB personally. Absolutely. That 19 people carry carrying capacity is just a huge advantage when trying to move the troops across the, across the battlefield. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks, looks like they've taken contact here on the east, this small group with Kahuna, Pokesmot, Fig, and the others in his squad here. They've taken contact on the east. Looks like they've taken down a few of the militia here, holding strong. It's great to see. Good to see that they're doing that. Actually, I'm going to... Oh, we hear the MTLB rattling out south here. S. Klein and Austin Kerr pushing out. They might get eyes on Sneaky Sniper, and 
Nasty Nate. We'll see what happens here. They're on the southern side, and these guys are holding fast on the wall. Nasty Nate is calling that the MTLB is pushing south, and when you hear that thing rattling along the trails, I know you mentioned it's a little scary earlier. It's even more scary in these one-life operations when you maybe don't know where it's coming from, and you don't know if you have lat with you anymore, and you can get popped at once with that thing. It's a bit scarier. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like the the two MTLBs here for Russia are holding the same vector down. Looks Absolutely. like they are facing to the south along this road, right, right where this squad from the militia are pushing in. Actually, I'm hearing contact out to the west here. We'll see what's happening. Oh, man, they are pushing in. SM Pure Paradise and Cool Breeze. Evan SMA, oh. Kirkley, shoving in from the west. One MTLB down for Russia. That was an amazing shot from the militia MTLB. Taking down SM Pure Paradise and Boogie 5. Great to see. Cool Breeze leading the charge into here. He's going to run into creeping if they come around this building. They're trying to clear all these corners. This is Kirkley's squad just trying to shove themselves in, see what they can see. Creeping right around this corner. He's up on the corner of the wall. Cool Breeze sees him and downs creeping. There it goes. Good shot. They heard those coming in. Cool Breeze calling out people still up. He's taking some more contact from his south there. Hendo getting some shots put in on him. We've got a flanking element coming in. Muff Bandit on the flank. You can see him now creeping around here. Taking some shots. He got hit. He got hit. Bandaging up. Some nades come in. Blue Falcon nearly gets hit. Hendo pushes up. Cool Breeze takes a hit. He's falling back. Got to get bandaged up. He's in bad shape. He's going to need some medical touching if he can find it. Oh, Scarce gets one tapped by Muff Bandit. Oh, Cool Breeze gets tapped by Muff. Muff going off. Muff takes down Blue Falcon as well. Muff is destroying. Oh, and then he finally gets downed by Evans SMA. Oh, man. Muff, lighten it up. I love to see it. Usually Muff's here commentating with me, but this week we got Google tracks in, so I like to see Muff going off. That makes me feel good. Makes me feel Absolutely. good. Absolutely. He was excited <laughs> to play in this op tonight and give me the opportunity to be here, and it's Absolutely. awesome to see him just go off like that, having fun. Good shots in, man. He he basically stopped this entire push by himself. Now Evan SMA and SM Pure Paradise, the only people left. Three people Muff dropped from the corner there. Possibly four. This guy got dropped as well. That might be actually four. Let's see. Muff downs four, yep. Muff dropped four people from this push, leaving only SM Pure Paradise and Evan SMA alive. So much for that push. Muff Bandit comes in from the south, and he says, not today, boys. <laughs> I love to see that, man. So good. Yeah, it looks right. like Tedish pulling his squad back a little bit in the, in the shipping yards here, leaving two guys on this on this eastern side in the building to surprise somebody, but pulling his guys back closer to the recruits, just creating a little bit of a little bit of a perimeter for them as well. Gonna fly out here and head out here to the east. See what's going on out there. What do you got going on, Google? Uh, it looks like Tedish is just holding holding strong in this two-story building here on the west side of shipping, just about 200 yards or so from the Recruit Exhill building. Just creating a really good perimeter off off the point. Something we really got to do. Don't don't bunker up on one point. Makes it easier for them to shoot you all down. Absolutely. Out here in the east, somebody we haven't got to see much of yet so far. Satan. I haven't really got to follow him around. Satan, Odessa, Sightless, Order Bay, Crazy Russian. Kind of holding out here. They have picked up the techies that they had of their at their disposal. Magnus Ar or Magus Arcanus with the uh, uh, I can't even talk today. <laughs> with the Dishka techie. Magus, you're taking fire 060. As you can see, this Dishka techie it's actually pretty weak as far as defense goes, but it's got some pretty good offensive ratings. 
It's a very fast vehicle, though. You can see Magus opening up, firing in some suppressive fire. Can't really hold too many people, but it's got this discus sitting on the back, and that thing can rain down absolute hell. The militia can seriously put this thing to work if they actually put in a little bit of effort with it. It's not very durable, but it can do a job. Looks like the militia MTLB taking pot shots at the recruit exfil building, and the recruits are panicking. They don't have bandages, so when they take a hit, they have to find someone else. Absolutely. Yeah, they're saying they, they don't want to die. They don't have bandages, and they don't have ammo. <laughs> they have one guard there with them, and that's it. Xbit has pushed up on the south himself. He's still glassing in there, keeping eyes on these buildings. And he's just a bush ninja right now. He's just hanging out in that bush, and he says, this is my bush, I am camouflaged, and I am going to hang out in there. And just make sure that I can get good eyes. It's good to see. They're calling out the MTLB being up north. It seems that they have a decent locale on it. The This eastern push is actually starting to come in now. Nasty Nate. Chappy, Dreadful Decay, starting to push themselves into this location. And we can see actually straight ahead here, Karma Cut, the command for the Russians on this eastern side. Just here in... Yeah, it looks like Shadow Ritual and Moose are the only ones on that, on that front to meet Nasty Nate, Chappy, and the others. And it sounds like Shadowed called infantry direct east of him. He knows about them now. Looks like Shadowed Ritual here taking taking a hit from that 50 cal with Moose in the building. Karma Cut getting in on the action a little bit here on the eastern front. Yeah, that looks like the major militia offensive here is getting broken apart a little bit. A couple of their troops are down here. Looks like they do have troops close on the militia exfil building, and the best pony himself pushing in. Recruits don't know how much of a privilege it is to get pushed by the enemy command. Doesn't happen often. Best Pony and SM Pure Paradise, X Bit and Slinger all pushing this building. The rest of the enemy platoon doesn't even know about it. Looks like they they have ears on, they're calling out movement outside their building. SM Pure Paradise shooting a rocket into the building across the street. Got this building surrounded and they're smoking it up. It looks like they're getting ready for a push here. They're getting ready to push into the building with the recruits and eliminate them, effectively finishing their objective. MTLB wreaking havoc. MTLB wreaking havoc here. Shooting up the buildings, suppressing any troops that may be in it getting ready to allow command and his troops to push in. Tedish over here with the other militia MTLB, Hyper Evo and Kapari in it. 
said is calling out MTLB. MTLB with Hyper taking a hit. Oh, and Hyper goes down. The MTLB with Militia goes down. Looks like they only have one MTLB left to worry about. The one that has a bead on the recruits here. Shadowed Ritual and Moose by themselves here. Chappy, Dreadful to Gay, and Sneaky Sniper about to push in on their building. Looks like a lot's going on here on two fronts. Russia having a hard time repelling on both fronts. And I believe that Russia command is down. Karma cut is down. He got killed on that push. I don't see him anywhere around here. He's engaging. He's coming. Shadow ritual getting pushed, calling out the push. Command when Karma cut goes down on both sides. The typical order of command chain of command is the number one SL, number two, number three, and then number four. After that. Command isn't transferred, and everybody is by themselves having to deal with no no command comms. They don't know what anybody else is doing except the people around them. It makes it really difficult to coordinate any major movements, especially when they have to defend multiple points. Oh, man. Looks like the recruits are getting pushed in. The building they are getting camping is getting pushed by Best Pony himself. One recruit goes down. Oh, Jesus. Dr. Kamikaze has his shovel out because he is out of ammo and pushes out. Expit push in and finishes off the recruits. All recruits are down. Looks like the building got cleared. Best Pony himself taking part in the in the killing. Matter. It looks like, looks like we lost. We lost all of the recruits here. They managed to push in. Best Pony himself pushing the building with his small group of of troops. All right, and I'm back. Sorry about that. Had a little bit of a crash. <laughs> no worries. Holding down the fort for you. See, I knew you could do this. You did a great job, absolutely, I, I gotta say. Pretty pretty rough to get in here on your first time and then be asked to solo stream whenever the main streamer crashes out, but hey, yeah. I'm, I'm back. Yeah, well, it was a little bit one-sided, but it looks like I managed to uh, cover the recruits getting killed, command getting killed, and uh, shadowed the next in command getting killed. And it looks like they're right. using the building that the recruits were hiding in to shoot at the squad meant to defend their, their, uh, I want to say this is their, yep, their Not eastern front, dates. their western front, sorry. Very cool. Looks like they're pushing in there now. I'm getting myself spawned in, so I'll be back up in a few. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like Russian forces quickly deteriorate. They only have a few scattered troops. Like I was saying earlier, as the commands go down, they start losing the ability to communicate with the different forces, as squads can't talk to each other without commands. Yeah, it's real rough to see that chain of command fall apart. It can be demoralizing for the lower guys, too. If they don't have a good setup, if you don't tell them, these are the standing orders, this is what's going on, this is who's going to be where. If you don't keep them updated as your squad lead, then they can fall apart whenever they don't have you around anymore. Yeah, absolutely. 
like the last two guys here on their southern, northern rather, front here. Kahuna and Han Solo. Oh, now Han Solo is going at it solo with the Dishkateki shooting at him. Dishkateki knows right where he's at, and he is shooting this wall, taking advantage of that bullet penetration. Gotta love that. Dishkateki with that penetration. That thing can really lay down some fire. I was actually surprised. I hardly ever used the Dishkateki. And finally, the other day during one of our test stops, I actually got the opportunity to use it. That thing... It feels powerful whenever you're laying in fire like that. It it feels good. Oh yeah, it was that uh I bet that was the op where you managed to take me and my whole squad down crossing the bridge. <laughs> I think that was you. That that, that was me. Hurts, especially out in the open. Anything out in the open mm -hmm. is is very quick. It's got a high rate of fire. And that 50 caliber bullet just takes apart entire troop movements. Speaking of that's another good thing that we should mention. Saturday, we're going to be out here hopefully doing this thing again, streaming it with a brand new op. We might not be streaming it, though. We'll see. Might be just a first-person thing. We'll have to see. I'll be around for it, but we'll see if we get the whole thing done. Yeah, it looks like Fig and Han Solo holding it up for the rest of the Russian team all by themselves. All right. Finally got myself back up into the action. <laughs> As the action's ending, of course, right? Right? Perfect timing for me, right? All right. So we've got a couple guys pushing around here. Just getting in here. That dish Kateki laying down some fire. That thing is spooky. You know they have to hear that. Oh, man. They're getting close. We've got Fig and Han Solo just holding it down here. They're the last two of the Russians. Google, got to say thank you so much for holding that down while I was gone. Appreciate Absolutely. it big time, buddy. Yeah, it was fun. I like this uh, trial by fire. It's, just, <laughs> it's, it's going going well, I think, on my end. That's how we do it in I'm squad ops. It. We just we shuck you to the wolves. Yeah, here you go. 30 minutes of basic training, and here's your first op. I, I know that whenever I was in my first op, they were like, okay, you're going to be an FTL, and I'm – I was surprised and said, okay, and my squad lead went down, and I was suddenly the squad lead for about two minutes before I got shot, and that was a terrifying moment for me. <laughs> Absolutely. I actually had a similar experience. Somebody fallen told me to be the FTL for a squad. Uh -huh, I had uh -huh. to ask what FTL meant. <laughs> yeah, that was quite quite the trial by fire. I did end up taking command of my squad right as command went down and I was well all other commands actually went down so I was the last one with command columns all by myself <laughs> all by yourself beautiful yes. so it looks like Xbit and his crew Satan they have all taken up residency in this building here they know that this is the Xville location and they have to try to clear it so they are assuming that they're just going to hold this, and the Russians will have to come in to try to clear it. They're not wrong, though it looks like looks like Han Solo and Fig are a little less intelligent, or not intelligent. Well, my, that was almost terrible. They're a little less uh, happy about trying to push into this. They seem to just want to hold in that location. Yeah, and it sound, seems like uh, with these fences here being, you can see right now as I... As I'm watching this, the 50 cal of that techie is just penetrating this tin foil fence. They don't have much for cover here, and Han Solo actually has no cover at all using the shrubbery as concealment only in hopes to surprise somebody as they come through this small gap. Looks like they're holding each other's backs. One's facing one gate and one is facing the other. Perhaps he is a knight who says knee and he demands a shrubbery. We'll see. Love the references. <laughs> oh, there's, there's the chat. So, Militia oh, here LZ. apparently must clear the LZ. So, basically, that is them telling them that they got to push out and they have to actually see all the forces that they can. They have to make sure that it is completely clear. We'll see. The LZ... The LZ is these apartments in that gas station. 
So I'm wondering if perhaps they don't really know that this is outside the Xville. I'm not sure. We'll see. Either way, this is kind of a, a little tertiary location as far as the Xville goes. And if they're going to try to push around and take that out, we'll see. Yeah, we'll have to see. I know the the building over here where Slinger is sitting on your side is their exfil location. That is the designated building. So I bet they're confused, scratching their heads, thinking exfil the land the <laughs> the landing zone here. We have to clear it, but we just did. Yeah, actually, I heard Pony say exactly that thing, so he's a little confused as to what they're supposed to be doing. It looks like... Ah, there we go. We get a clarification call from Hyper saying, clear the town. There we go. I was missing something obvious. So that's good. That means that they are going to have to push out. They're going to have to see that they can actually clear the entirety of the town. We'll see if they know that that means that northern compound as well. Gaming we'll Brennan saying he's eating dinner as fast as he possibly can so he can make the second round. Hopefully. Hopefully you can make it in. It'd be good to see. All you have to Just do is food breathe, down your face. breathe while putting food in your mouth. It Absolutely. looks like Han Solo and Fig laughing it up, trying to keep each other's oh. spirits up here as they're the last ones. Discotechy opens fire Fig. there. Yep, I, I yeah, Fig throwing a grenade out. Looks like he nicked Marcus Arcanus. Hey, hey, hey. Grenades Excuse go back me. in. I'm healing. Looks like it hit Han Solo. Han Solo is pulling out a bandage, pulling his bandage out. Fig taking down SM Pure Paradise. And Best he goes pony down trading, himself. taking Fig down. Best pony hit and bandaging himself as well. Looks like Han Solo. Laying down he fire in the That is good oh. game. That is GG. That is it. Very cool. All right. Well, Very sorry about game. that crash in the middle, and sorry about dropping it all on you there, Google, but that is going to be the end of this round. And that is the Militia walking away victorious on this one, commanded by Best Pony. Good job on his part. And we are going to take ourselves a little break here while they switch sides and get themselves put back together. We'll be back with round two of Operation Fishhook. Just step that.